for everyone that has joined us, I do appreciate you uh, taking your time out of your day to uh, go through uh, the Wet Sounds products. Uh, we will go through uh, a lot of the products today. We probably will not cover everything, but I will give you the ability to, uh, I'll give you my email address at the end, so if you guys have any questions or anything like that, you can email me directly, or you guys can give me a call also. I have a team of a team of, of uh, people here that can help you with almost any questions that you have. So let's go ahead and see if we can get uh, get started here. So of course, the first screen that you see here just basically tells all about wet sounds. Uh, what I want you to know about wet sounds is that there is actually three owners. Um, with the three owners, they are incredibly different, but they're also very similar. So. Back in 2005, what happened was there was these three guys that got together and they all had a love for boating and they all had a love for music. The problem was back in that year, uh, there was really nothing that was out on the market and available for audio for boats. The problem is you'd put your boat in the water, you'd turn the radio on, and at that point as soon as you fired the engine up and the wind started blowing by and you had the noise and everything else, you could no longer hear the audio system. And that was a big deal to all three of these guys, and they wanted to build something that would handle the harsh environments of the weather, the harsh environments of the marine application, and of course, even salt water. So this is how they came about creating wet sounds. Now, let me tell you how they're different, though. Uh, one is a offshore fisherman. He has a large boat, and that's his thing. He loves to travel for hours out into the Gulf of Mexico, because we're down here in Houston, Texas. And he goes and he fishes down in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, he enjoys to take his music with him as he goes to get to those locations as he goes out and, and as he comes back. One of the other owners, though, he likes to fish more inland. He likes to do reds. He is strictly a fisherman, but he likes to do the skinny water. So the deal is he has a flat bottom boat uh, designed for the uh, very thin water. And what he does is he loves to listen to his music as he's headed out to his fishing hole and as he is headed back. And then, from, of course, from fishing hole to fishing hole, because that's what uh, he enjoys is listening to the music as he is, uh, as he is uh, running along the waterway. And the other one, he is completely different. He is not a fisherman in any way. He is strictly a wakeboarder. His boat is strictly for the family. It's for himself, and uh, it's for the uh, for just for entertainment value. But he loves his music, and he loves his music so much that he wants to hear his music just as clearly as if he's sitting in the boat, as if when he is 80 feet behind the boat also uh, on that wake tower, or excuse me, when he's on his wakeboard, he wants to be able to hear that music just, just as loud and uh, just as clear. So that's where uh, this gentleman came into play, and of course this is where our towers came into play also. So let's see if we can go ahead and get started with some of the product. <laughs> so let's talk about the source units and what it takes. So this is what's going to go up front. We're going to cover the MC1, of course we'll cover that MD2, the transom remote, and then of course the small box at the bottom, that is the remote that is designed to operate all of the uh, LED lighting. At that point we will then talk about the MC2, which is going to be our step down, and then of course we'll follow into amplifiers and then speakers. So when you see here on the actual MC1, you can read all the features that are on the screen, but one of the big things that people really, really tell me is, Bobby, you know what? Everything that's on this screen, that's what my customer demands. It's just a given. I come in, I'm going to buy a radio. It needs to have all of these features already built in. So this is not really what we talk about because this is just an expectation unless your customer comes in and says very specifically, hey, I want to make sure I can tie my iPhone in. I just thought it was a given. Somebody walks into a shop. I'm going to buy a radio, I'm going to tie my iPhone in it or my Android or whatever it may be so I can listen to my music directly from my phone because that's where a lot of people get their music from. This is probably the bigger part of what people are looking for. So if you take a look and you see those buttons underneath the, underneath the volume knob itself, if you can see here number one, number two, and number three, this is probably the most important part of the unit itself. The reason why I state that is, is because those three buttons are programmable. And as you can see down here at the bottom, it says here, one touch audio system level control. One, it says dock, the other one says cove, and the other one says cruising. Well, we can name those three buttons anything we choose. 
So this gives us the ability to preset volume levels on the boat by pushing and holding one of those buttons. So if we're headed into the dock and we want to be really nice to our neighbors as we're coming into the, into the dock area, we could set up number one and we could call it dock and the music's blaring as we're coming in and all of a sudden we push and hold number one and that will take your music down to a minimum if that's what you set it to. Now again, remember, our customers are very interesting. Sometimes people are really proud of their wet sounds. So sometimes dock mode is not necessarily quiet mode. For others, it is just the opposite. I want it as loud as possible because I want everybody to see me, hear me, and notice me and notice my vote. I get it. I really do. So depending on what your customer wants, three different buttons. I like to think of it as number one is dock. Me personally, I would call number two cove. For a lot of the guys that go into the coves and whatnot, that's where the tower speakers are going to be really, really loud. The end boats would be not quite as loud. And then at that point, your subwoofer would be set at a moderate level. And then, of course, I would have one which would be called cruising. I like the cruising one, which that just means everything is wide open. And you got to remember, we're different than car audio. When you're on that boat, the audio system truly does. It stays at 110% all the time, especially while that boat is running. Unlike cars, most of the time, people turn that audio system up extremely loud only when they want to impress their friends. We have to overcome all of that wind noise, all of that, all the sounds from the engine itself, and from there, the water splashing up against the boat. The next thing I really like to talk about with customers is this up here at the top. If you see at the top right-hand corner, see where it says 14.4 volts? The unit itself will give you a voltage indicator. This means that if you're back in that cove and you're partying and then all of a sudden your voltage starts to drop down, that head unit will, that screen will start to flash and will let you know that the party is about to stop. And if you're that guy, you're no longer going to be that guy any longer when your music stops. So one of the big things that I like to reinforce to customers, especially with large audio systems, is making sure that they keep the batteries fresh. It just happens. Now, can somebody help me out and tell me what the IPX6 rating is? Waterproof rating. Waterproof rating. It, we, can actually take, we can actually take some jets of water, so splashes of water, on the actual face of the unit, and we don't have to worry about getting it getting wet. Now, you notice there's a hideaway box. That hideaway box does not have an IPX6 rating, so we do recommend that you mount that out in a way with the amplifiers up somewhere in a very dry area. Now, the cable between the actual, the actual unit itself down to the hideaway box is eight foot in length. Some people tell me, Bobby, that does no good. I need more. So we do have extension cables, and they are an eight-foot length. The best I can tell you at this point is that we are good for 16 feet. I have been told by others that they've connected more than 16 feet and that it still works flawlessly. But for, my, for this presentation, I stop, at the, I stop at 16 feet. Everyone good? Yep. yep. All right. Perfect. From there, this is the LED controller. It is sold separately. The great thing about the LED controller is when you wire all the LEDs in the boat, you're going to wire it all back to this shadow caster control box. At that point, from the actual MC1, there's only two wires. It's a CAN bus, so it'll be a positive and a negative. You're going to run those two wires to that box, and it's going to be that simple of an install. So it does work on a CAN box. And we do have some future pieces that are going to be coming from uh, Shadowcaster, different controllers that we can also mount, that we'll be able to mount in uh, other places of the boat if we're working on a much larger boat. And people say, hey, I want more controls. I want the ability to control lighting at a different location. But that also now leads us into the point of a transom remote. So people will say, hey, Bobby, I need the ability to be able to control my audio system when I am swimming outside of the back of the boat or I'm just standing having a good time because I am on, I am sitting on a sandbar, my music's playing, and I don't necessarily want to crawl in and out of the boat over and over again. What I want is the ability to just reach up, 
from the outside of the boat, on the back of the boat, with this little small controller and be able to change tracks, change volume control, and take care of business. If you notice, all the connectors are red in color. The reason why is because there is a red connector that is on the hideaway box of the MC1. This ensures that the install will go flawlessly. If you also look on the right hand side, you see this little arrow? That yep. little arrow yep. that this cable is directional. It only goes one way. It's not going to be that difficult. It won't plug in uh, any other way. But for installers, I just want to make sure that when you put it in, that you get it done the first time correctly because there's nothing worse than running the wire and go, oh my goodness, it doesn't work. I've got to pull it out and I've now got to rerun the wire because I accidentally put it in incorrectly. With the MC1, we have the ability to tie up to three of these. So you can tie three of these up to the MC1 and everything will work perfectly. Now we do have customers that say, Bobby, that's just not good enough. I need the ability to control not, on the, not only the audio from a transmitter remote or a different, different controller, but I also want to control the lights. Well, that brings us to our next piece of product, which is the MCMD2. Now the MCMD2 and also the MC1 control faceplate look identical. There is no difference between them if you were to look at the units themselves. The only thing that is going to the only thing that's going to make them stand out is a tag that is going to be listed on the MCMD2 and it will note that it's an MCMD2. The major difference between the two displays is going to be the internal software. So that means that one knows that it's the master unit, the other knows that it's the secondary unit, and you do have the ability to add up to a total of two more. So you could have three of these displays throughout the application that you're doing the install. The only things you can't get into with the MCMD2 is going to be your deepest level of controls, which is going to be such as firmware updates and things such as that. If you have a customer that damages the primary display, you cannot replace it with the MCMD2. It will not work. It must be replaced with a master unit. Stepping down, this is going to be the customer that says, hey, I love everything that you told me about the MC1. I think it's great, but I am not here to spend, I'm not here to spend $700 on a head unit. It's not going to happen. I just need some music. I don't need all the lights necessarily, or I don't need four zones. I just need a couple of zones, and from there, you know what? I'll do a different lighting controller, which that turns into the RF RGB controller. This unit, much smaller, still gives you all of the features that most customers are looking for, the ability to tie in the phone, the ability to do, do the auxiliary input, of course, the USB. Does have internal power, but of course, I always recommend external amplifiers because of the application. The one thing that I do want you to see, which is very cool, is we did not take away the idea of having the MCTR transom remote. So even with the smaller unit here, you have the ability to add that smaller round transom remote that we just looked at. You have the ability to tie it into this particular unit. And we do have a zone two, which zone two is more of an attenuation than anything else. And you can choose what you want to tie that zone two into. You can tie it into a subwoofer, you can tie it into the in boats, or you can tie it into say the towers. It basically comes down to the point of what would you like to have a secondary attenuation controller over? A lot of people still use it as their subwoofer and they use it as a subwoofer level controller. And that's fine. Me personally, I would probably use it for my in boats because I'm going to end up at a, I'm going to end up in a cove or I'm going to end up on a sandbar and I want the ability to turn down the in boats just so that my towers and my subwoofer will continue to play. Amplifiers. <laughs> so here at Wet Sounds, we have multiple series of amplifiers. We have the Sinister Series Cindy X and, the, and also the HTX. Major difference between them, of course, is going to be power handling. We also have the Micro Series. We'll talk about the Micro Series in just a moment. The Sinister Series, though, gives you the absolute best of everything that someone would want, and it is our absolute most efficient. 
And when I say most efficient, we use what we call a maxed out power supply on the Sinister SDX series. This was actually used, this was actually used uh, with uh, Robert Zeff's help, if you're familiar with who Robert Zeff is, amplifier designer out there. He worked with us to build a power supply in the actual unit itself that would be a little more efficient. Now I'm gonna tell you, if I had one of the owners sitting here, that owner would tell you that we're about 90% efficient on our Class D. I'm not gonna tell you that, it's not the case. Most of our Class D amplifiers, or most Class D amplifiers that are out on the market are about 80% efficient. With this power supply designed by Robert Zeff, we are probably in the neighborhood of about 84 or 85% efficiency. The big thing that we always tell people is, hey, go out, take a look at other marine amplifiers that are out on the market. See how much output power you get from the amplifier versus how much amplifier current is required to keep the amplifier going. Remember, most of the guys that own these big audio systems, they're back in the coves, they're gonna be backed up to the beach, they're gonna be in the lake, more than likely the boat's not gonna be running, and they're going to be running on battery power only. They have to have a certain amount of storage to be able to run all of this, and then at the end of the day, they've got to get the boat home, and they've got to get those things charged. So what we want to do is give the customer the most output that we possibly can with the least amount of current draw, and that's where the big key is when it comes to our Sinister Series amplifiers. Now, the Syndicate Series, when you come down, it's not a bad amplifier. It's a great amplifier. Less power, does not have, doesn't have the, the maxed out power supply. But for example, our SDX6 is probably one of our go-to amplifiers when it goes when, when it comes to and when it comes to a one amplifier audio system for a boat. That amplifier puts out 125 watts times four and 200 watts times two on channels five and six. And if you bridge channels five and six, it'll give you. 600 watts on those on those rear two channels. So it's a really great go-to amplifier, especially for the price point. And then when we come down to the HydroTech, that's the customer. He wants to play with the, with the big dogs. There again, he just doesn't quite have that budget to do it, but he still wants to have the brand. He still wants to have the longevity of the product. That's where the HydroTech series comes in. It hits a price point, and from there, it still gives the customer, gives the customer what they want and from there, the performance that Wet Sounds is going to uh, give them. Here's probably one of the coolest things about our three series of amplifiers. The amplifiers themselves do, the amplifiers themselves, with the exception of the smallest amplifier, has built-in fault codes. So if you ever have a customer that's having an issue with a Wet Sounds amplifier, if you will walk out to the boat, turn the key over, triggering the amplifier to power up, if that amplifier is giving you a fault code, if you'll take a moment and you will look at the number of flashes that's going on on the LED of that actual amplifier, it will tell you where the problem is. Now, how fast is that? How, how much quicker can you be, how much quicker can you repair a problem or troubleshoot a system if the amplifier is already telling you, hey, we're having a problem on channels one and two? At that point, it's simple. We go, we check out the front two speakers, at that point, figure out we either have a short, shorted voice coil or from there we have a bad wire. The biggest thing that I see a lot of, I get phone calls, hey, I'm having a problem, my audio system won't play. I ask the customer to turn the key over. They tell me the number of flashes and I tell them at that moment, you need to charge your batteries because I ended up getting the code that said that we had under voltage protection going on and I get the same thing over and over. How do you know that from the other side of the telephone? And I get to tell them about how the Wet Sounds amplifier has smart technology built into it, and by the number of flashes, it told me what the problem was. Did everyone did everyone know that our amplifiers did that? Yeah. Cool. Very good. Thank you. From there, here is the smaller ones. This is the STX series. We only make two of these. We make the four-channel version, and also we make the one-channel, which is the mono block. The neatest thing about these particular amplifiers is they do not have RCAs. And a lot of people say, neat. How does that make it neat? That makes it difficult for me, Bobby. I, I'm, a, I'm a car guy, not just a boat guy or not just an ATV guy. What's the purpose of this? Well, the idea is, is this amplifier is probably going to end up on a bike, side-by-side -side ATV or UTV. 
Most customers are going to want to have a custom install, and you're going to need to run wires down that tubing. Much easier to run a 3.5 millimeter connector down that tubing than it is to try to run RCAs. So that was one of the reasons for changing that from RCAs over to a 3.5. Your customer also has the ability to tie in one of our Bluetooth controllers if they wanted to do that, or simply just plug their phone directly into the amplifier if they still have, if they still have an output from their phone. Great little amplifier. Have any of you guys worked with these amps? No. All right. I would suggest give these guys a try, especially the point if you take the if you take the four channel version, which is the STX Micro Four, take it and bridge it, turn it into a two channel amplifier. You get 280 watts times two at a four ohm load. Extremely powerful amplifier. It hits a good price point, and from there, it's small and it's easy to hide. Let's talk about Revo speakers. Revo speakers, there's some absolutely cool technologies with our Revo speakers that other people do not do. So first of all, most of your guys that are in the marine audio usually are also in car audio also. In our case, we don't do any car audio. We strictly specialize in marine grade audio only. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a look at the cone of the speaker here and the surround. At that point where I have the little cursor, where that attaches, we do not use glue. That is a what we call a, ther a heat thermoform Santa Prime bonding point. What we do is that cone gets put into the machine, and then at that point the surround is then injected, and it is heat bonded together. The reason for this is, is because in a boat, marine application, or anything that's outdoor, heat, the glue will eventually break down from heat, cold, moisture, things like that, and that would be a failure point. And you will see that in standard car audio speakers. We did not want a failure point, so we use no glue in this area whatsoever, so we don't have to worry about failure. The other thing that we do, which is really cool, is we use watertight speaker connectors and also LED connectors. Again, other guys take a car audio speaker, they spray it down, and they marinize it, and they call it a marine speaker. Let me tell you, some of those guys, for some reason, I can't figure it out, but they forget to coat the tinsel leads, and they also forget to coat the connectors. And again, that's the first place to corrode, and from there, then we're, then we're going to get failure. You don't have to worry about failure when it comes to these speakers, when it comes to corrosion because we are watertight. The next image that you're going to see shows the actual spider. Our spider is made of a Santa Prime rubber. That I know of, there's no one else out on the market using Santa Prime rubber on the spider itself. Again, most people are using paper or cloth or some type of material and they're coating it, calling it a marine speaker. We do not coat it. I put a coat of wax on my vehicle just to protect the paint. Eventually, that coating will break down. Eventually, if this is coated, like other guys, it will also break down and it will be a failure point. With wet sounds, you're talking about Santa Prime rubber through and through, which we do not have to worry about that speaker breaking down and worrying about a failure. Very cool when it comes to that technology. This image that you're looking at is showing a blow up of, a, of the actual Revo speaker. Now, if you see how the grill is separated, the tweeter is separated, everything else is in the square, and then the crossover, which is over here, separated, and also the back plate. I show you this image to let you know if for some reason your customer has a fail point, let's just say for some reason it is the tweeter, if their tweeter fails for some reason here at Wet Sounds, Rather than having to have that speaker sent all the way back in for service, having us take a look at it, throwing it in the trash and sending out a whole other speaker and adding to our landfills and just creating more havoc to the world, I have the ability to just send you the tweeter itself. And the tweeter is very easy and very simple to swap out. All you have to do is remove the three screws, <laughs> which would remove the grill itself, 
Everything else is on a quick disconnect, and then from there, pull the tweeter and the wire out, put the new one in, and then put everything back together. So that is one thing that we pride ourselves on, is having a serviceable speaker. So if your customer runs into a problem, they do not have to have a hole in the boat for an extremely long period of time, just as long as it takes for you to pull it out and get whatever part is broken, getting it replaced. Same thing when it comes to the crossover or the, or the mid-range driver, I have the ability of sending out just those particular parts if that's all that's wrong with the speaker and it's covered under the factory warranty. How many other customers, do, how many other um, vendors do you know out there that have serviceable speakers? Are there many? No. Okay. I'm just making sure because I, I mean, if you know, you got to tell me because I don't know of anybody else that does it. It's strictly us. Yeah. From there, here's our recon series. The recon series is built on the similar platform as the Revo. The difference is, is the power handling. These guys will only handle 60 watts of power, like 60 watts is not enough. And I say 60, it's 65 watts, versus our Revos are designed to handle 100 watts of power. All the same technologies, just not as much power handling. Another very cool thing about this particular speaker is, is the price point. So we still get the Santa Prem, we still get the heat thermoform surround on the, on the speaker itself. We still have the ability to service the speaker, from there, we have, the, we have the Spider itself made out of Santa Prem rubber, and we're a true marine-grade speaker coming in at $199 retail. Is that a pretty good price point for a true marine-grade speaker? Sure is. Perfect. I like that. Let's switch over to our towers at this point. Now we have three. Oh, question? No, no. All right. No, you're good. Okay, perfect. At this point, let's, let's take a look at our tower speakers. We now have three different sets of tower speakers that are available, and of course we have them available in different sizes. So let's start, and I say different sizes, let's start by walking into this one first. This is going to be our Recon Series Pod 6, and it's going to come in a white or a black that's all the way to the right of the screen. It is built on, the, on a similar platform as the Revo 6 in a can. The actual the actual clamp itself does come with that pod, and that clamp is designed to, to go on a pipe up to two inches. So three-quarter inch to two inches is what that's designed for, and that clamp is completely swivel, so you can do a swivel on it, and you can also remove the top part of the clamp to then be able to bolt onto a flat surface. So if you do have a flat surface that you want to bolt onto, remove the top of the clamp, and simply bolt down to it. Also behind this tweeter is an LED, which will be included, so it will shine back on the speaker itself, illuminating the speaker to match all the other speakers that may be on the right. This is designed more for our ATV, UTV guys. It comes in at a price point retail level of $499 that we know of. There's not a lot of people coming out with a, with a speaker at around that price point with the type of technology that we use. When we step up, of course, that comes into our Icon series. The Icon series are truly designed more for in-boat listening, even though they're on a tower. Um, they're not really designed to project a long distance. They will project, but not as, long, not as far as our compression drivers would. So the idea behind this is, is for somebody that wants to put them on the, on the towers, but use them more for in-boat listening than anything else. The go-to, of course, for most customers is going, to be the, is going to be the Rev Series, and that's the ones with the compression driver. And you can see the compression horn located right here. Now, what's interesting is, is, you know, we talk to customers about the difference between it, and we try to tell them, hey, you want to go with a compression driver. Well, why? Well, it projects the sound out. It, it gets it out to you, so when you're on the wakeboard, you'll be able to hear it. Well, you know, for some people, they get it. They really do. But I have a little analogy that I'm going to share with you, and you can share with your customers if you choose. What I like to do is I like to tell people, imagine having a garden hose, and water is coming out of the end of that garden hose, and it's just pouring onto the water, So, I, I'm, excuse me, onto the ground. So out of the garden hose, directly onto the ground. Well, I like to refer, that, refer to that as the standard tweeter. That would be the same thing as what's on the icon or what's on the actual pod speaker here. 
not a bad. I'm still watering the ground, and I'm doing what I need, but the water doesn't go out very far. Now imagine taking your thumb and putting your thumb over the end of the garden hose, compressing the water, now shooting the water out further to now reach whatever I'm really trying to water. Well, that's where the compression driver comes in also. I'm shooting out to you because you're on a wakeboard because you're about 80 feet behind that boat, and I'm getting the sound out to you. you got to remember, our customers typically on an average that are buying these speakers, they have a speaker, they have a boat that they probably spent somewhere in the neighborhood of about $200,000 on. At that point, when you spend $200,000 on a boat, truly you want to listen to your audio system just as if you were sitting in the boat, but you want to hear it 80 feet out when you're on your wakeboard also. And that's what it comes down to, is being able to hear those speakers and hearing them at a long distance. Now when it comes to clamps, you can see that I have a few things here listed in red. The reason why I put these in red is because right now I only have one of them that's, that's in the price guide, which is the fixed clamp silver aluminum. But I don't have this swivel X mount. That will be coming out very shortly. We're going to be uh, revising our, our price guide and getting that out and getting it available to everybody. But we will have a swivel X mount, which that is this top picture. So what it is, is it's a swivel base mount is what it is. So essentially the swivel connector without the clamp on it. So for the guys that have been buying the swivel clamp and you've been taking it apart, you no longer have to do that and throw this piece away. You can order those speakers with the base mount or what we call the swivel X mount. We also have spacers for the X mount because sometimes what will happen is when you use the X mount, which goes to a flat surface, sometimes that surface, it's flat, but we need a little more distance between that surface and the speaker itself. So sometimes we need a spacer. We do also offer the spacers to um, have that available to you. <laughs> let's switch gears here and let's go into our stealth bars. So our stealth bars, we have an IP67 rated. Now, the IP rating changes just a little bit compared to what we were talking about in the Marine on the radio because it was an IPX6. So the IP67 Six, is, six basically means that we are dust tight. What that means is we can take, we can put this on our ride, go running the trails, and we do not have to worry about the intrusion of dust or, or, or particles getting into our sound bar. So that keeps it safe and also gives you longevity for the actual sound bar itself. The seven means that we can handle water. But let me explain to you exactly what type of water we can handle. We can handle submersion up to one meter. That's not very deep. The idea is if you, fl if you flip your ride over, we will survive. What we cannot survive, though, is I cannot survive when somebody wants to power wash it. And I will tell you, you sell enough of our sound bars, you will have a sound bar that's going to come back, and somebody's going to say, hey, it just stopped working. And of course, if you're gonna, you, if if you do, you should ask, hey, what was going on? What happened? Well, you know, I went out on the trails. I had a good time. I got muddy, got it back. I washed it down. And the next thing you know, it just simply stopped. Then you ask the question: By chance, did you use a power washer? If they say yes, at that point, tell them, hey, it really will not handle power washing. Let's give Wet Sounds a call and see if they can help us out. So I will do this for you. If you have a customer, just because they didn't know, they accidentally power wash their sound bar, and it's less than two years old, and it does have water in it, for the first time, I will offer forgiveness. I will take care of the customer, even though it's not a factory defect, get it in, dry it up, put a new amplifier in it, and send it back. I just want us to all work together to educate the customer to let them know, hey, we, are, we cannot handle forced water. Everybody help me out with that, and I'll help you. How about that? Sounds good. Perfect. From there, <laughs> one of the big things that we talk about is the extruded aluminum housing. The advantage of that, of course, is it's much stronger. It also has an amplifier that's attached to it, so it helps cool the amplifier. 
And some of the trains that I've done, some people will tell me, hey, Bobby, that means that it's lighter. Well, not always lighter because, you know, there are sound bars out on the market that are made of plastic. There again, you tell me, do you really want to sell a plastic sound bar? Well, maybe if, if it hits a price point, but longevity-wise, it's not going to last your customer. If the customer really wants something that's going to last them and they want a nice warranty to go along with it, if by chance if they have to use it, because, of course, all wet sounds products come with a two-year warranty, at that point, they do want to go with the wet sounds. And when it does come to the Ultra HD, of course, it will have Bluetooth built in. And as you can see, the controllers are there on the front. And we do all have auxiliary in and auxiliary out. What a lot of people will miss on is it has a wireless remote, but people forget that it's RF. So the idea is if, if it's nighttime, you got the fire built, you're sitting next to your honey, and you want to change the music to a little mood music, don't worry about the position of where the ride is sitting. You know that it's RF. You click the remote. You know that whatever you need to change, such as a track, it's going to change, and you don't have to worry too much. From there, of course, you always want to sell that add-on Stealth AS subwoofer. I always recommend the largest one, which is our AS10. We offer it also in an AS8 and also an AS6. Again, offering larger is better. There again, it's also, it makes you more money because it is the more expensive one, but it's easier to turn it down than it is to try to take an AS6 and turn it up. Also, currently, just so you know, I'm sold out of AS6s, so even a better decision to sell AS10s. Now, there are two, two more versions of this sound bar. We have the next one down, which is going to be our surge. Simply remove, it simply removes the controls from the front of the sound bars. Why in the world would I want to surge then, Bobby? Well, if your customer comes in and they want to mount that speaker behind them, you would do better to sell them the surge and then sell them a Bluetooth controller to go in the dash because each time if you sold them one of these, each time when they get to the ride, they would have to walk to the back and they would have to turn the sound bar on and then be able to control everything from the remote. But the remote does not have a power button on it. So that's the reason why I say sell them the surge when it comes to those types of applications. You can also tie a surge in with this sound bar, which is the Ultra HD, if you wanted to have multiple sound bars tied into an audio system. And then from there, we also offer what we call our core, and it's exactly what it states. It is just a shroud and speakers. At that point, the customer is going to need to have some type of source unit and or an amplifier also because they're going to have to have the ability to power it. You guys do pretty good selling sound bars? Yeah, fairly good. Yep. Good, good. <laughs> this is going to be our big push for, uh, for this year. This is going to be our super coolers. As you can see, there's multiple colors that are available. From there, the one, thing about our, the one thing about our cooler, unlike other coolers that are out on the market, is we do have batteries built in. You do not have to leave us plugged in. Now, we do give you an AC charger. We also give you a 12-volt charger also. So for some reason, you're in the vehicle and you need to charge it, you'll have the ability to do that also. This cooler comes also with, a, with the same two-year warranty that Wet Sounds offers on all their other products. We have tested this against other coolers that are out there. I'm not going to give you any other names, but other coolers that are out there, and we will keep your drinks just as cold, but we will also provide entertainment that goes along with, with it. We say the word Shiver 55, and the reason why we say 55 is because it's 55 liters, which is 58 quarts. Shiver 58 just doesn't sound as cool, so that's the reason why we use the word 55. So everything and anything that a customer wants. Another neat thing that we have when it comes to these coolers is we have wraps. We work with a company, we work with a company called Gator Step, and we offer these wraps. Now what you're looking at is strictly just the top cover. So we have wraps that can go on top, and we also have wraps that can go all the way around. We also recommend to our customers, if you would prefer, if you don't want to get wet sounds, gator steps, what you can do is reach out to gator step directly, and you can send gator step your logo, and you can have your company logo put on the actual cooler itself. So when you're out, 
and people say, man, that's the absolute coolest thing that I've seen. Where do I buy that from? Your company logo would be on top of the cooler. What a way to drive your company and also a way to drive wet sound sales. To me, it's a win-win, but that does require going through Gator Step and sending them your company logo to have this custom made. At that point, let's cover some warranties. I've talked about it already. We are two-year parts and labor when it comes to that. To attain warranty, you can give us a call, or, of course, you can send that in via email to warranty at wetsounds.com. Wetsounds what do we need from you? Well, we need the customer's name, address, city, state, zip code, contact number, or you can provide yours if you're going to send it in. We would like a copy of the proof of purchase of when you sold it, okay, to the customer, and then from there a de detailed description of the problem, okay, and images when available. Now, depending on what the product is, some of our products are a field destroy. So what you can do prior to actually, you can send the email, tell us what's there, and we will be in contact to let you know whether we need to get the product back from you to service it or whether we're going to do a field destroy and maybe ask for some more images. It's not all the products, but some of them do, do qualify under a field destroy. But that is going to be, uh, that's going to be a phone call or us emailing you back, letting you know um, if that piece of product qualifies under that particular warranty. Do we have any questions? Mm -mm. I do appreciate your time. Um, if there's anything else I can help you with, let me know. But at this point, the presentation has, uh, is ended. Thank you very much, Bobby. Thank you, and everybody have a wonderful day. You do the same. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.